Good morning. Today we're looking at Section 2, Related Rates, out of Chapter 5, Symbolic Differentiation, out of Business Calculus with Excel. This section can be viewed as a special case of either the chain rule or implicit differentiation. We're looking at problems with three variables, which provides three pairs of variables, and we'll know how to find the derivatives of two of the pairs, but want the derivatives to connect the third pair. This breaks into two cases. The first case is composition of functions. If y equals g of x and z equals f of y, then z equals f of g of x. Our normal chain rule says the derivative of z with respect to x is the derivative of z with respect to y times the derivative of y with respect to x. It looks like we're doing fractions and they just cancel the fractions. The second case is when we have two variables that are each dependent on a third and we want to connect them. It's an example of implicit differentiation. We have some relationship f of zy equals zero and when we take derivatives we're going to note that dz dy equals dz dt divided by dy dt. Once again the derivatives work like fractions. We're going to invert and multiply to divide the fractions. The dt's will cancel out and I'll get z dz dy. As is our normal custom, we'll start with examples that we can do either by related rates or by elimination of a variable, and then move on to cases where elimination is impractical. And once again, as is normal practice, I'll follow the structure of the text, but do different examples. So the first example, I'm going to look at something like revenue of quantity is equal to quantity times 10 minus quantity and cost of quantity is equal to 5 quantity plus 100. Looking at this problem, I can compute the revenue dq easily. That's revenue dq is revenue as a function of q is minus q squared plus 10q and so the revenue dq is minus 2q plus 10. I can also compute the cost dq pretty easily. That's equal to 5. I want the revenue d cost because I know as revenues in, as quantity is increasing, revenue is increasing. And as quantity is increasing, cost is increasing. But what I'm really interested in is as I increase my investment, how does my revenue increase? So what's my return on investment? And so this is a problem that I can do by elimination. I can look at it and say that cost equals 5q plus 100. So 5q equals cost minus 100 q equals cost over 5 minus 20. I can plug that back into the first equation and get that revenue is cost over 5 minus 20 times 10 minus quantity cost over 5 minus 20. That Simplifies a bit, cost over 5 minus 20. 10 minus minus 20 is 30 minus cost over 5. And this is going to be minus cost squared over 25. I'm going to get a 4 cost and a 6 cost. So plus 10 cost minus 600. And so I now have revenue as a function of cost. I can look at then the revenue, the cost is minus 2c over 25 plus 10. And so that was done by eliminating variables. However, I can also look at these derivatives that I already have and notice that 
the revenue D cost is equal to the revenue DQ, that gives me the revenue on the top, divided by D cost DQ. When I divide, I'm going to invert and multiply. That'll give me a D cost on the bottom. And this is going to be minus 2Q plus 10 divided by 5. I want to substitute my cost to see that this is the same thing. This is minus 2 times cost over 5 minus 20 plus 10 divided by 5. I'm going to get minus 2 cost over 5 plus 40 plus 10 over 5. That adds up to 50. This becomes minus 2 cost over 25. 50 over 5 is plus 10. So I have the same answer from both directions, except I think doing this second way was easier than the first way, particularly if I'm willing to just accept the answer being this, that was a relatively easy problem to do by related rates and considerably harder if I did it by elimination. We now want to look at a second example. In this case, my revenue in terms of quantity is minus quantity cubed minus 5 quantity squared plus 500 quantity and my cost in terms of quantity is 500 plus 10q plus q squared. I don't particularly want to solve this for quantity. I'd have to use the quadratic equation. I don't want to solve the other way because I really don't want to have to solve the cubic equation. I'm just going to leave them as they are. The revenue D quantity is minus 3 quantity squared minus 10 quantity plus 500. My cost D quantity is 10 plus 2 quantity. My derivative of revenue with respect to cost is minus 3 quantity squared minus 10 quantity plus 500 divided by 10 plus 2 quantity squared. It's worth noting that if I keep the long names and make this the revenue, the quantity, I mean the cost, or change in revenue with respect to change in quantity in cost it lets me understand what I'm looking for in the problem for my next example I'm going to look at widgets from slime from Goop. I take Goop and I turn it into slime. I take slime and I turn it into widgets. And I have widgets in terms of slime is 10 slime plus slime squared. And slime in terms of Goop is 5 Goop plus the square root of Goop. The widgets The slime is 10 plus 2 slime. The slime, the goop, is 5 plus 1 half, 1 over the square root of goop, taking my derivative. And so the widgets, the goop, is 10 plus 2 slime divided by 5 plus 1 over 2 the square root of goop. And so this gives me another problem where I'm doing composition of functions.
The last problem I want to look at in the section is time for Cobb-Douglas. Recall what we have is our basic equation y equals 100 times labor to the 1 fourth times capital to the 3 fourths and we had asked about the labor de capital and de capital de labor but what I may be interested in is if I know the labor DT find the capital DT so one of these is moving and measurable and I want to use it to predict the other so I hit the entire equation with the operator derivative with respect to t and I'm going to get 0 equals 100 times I have a product rule here 1 fourth L to the minus 3 fourths times d labor dt times k to the 3 fourths plus labor to the 1 fourth times 3 fourths times k to the minus 1 fourth times dk dt. So this is implicit differentiation where we're taking the derivatives with respect to t. And I'm going to take this. I'd like to divide the equation by 100. I'd like to multiply by a fourth. I'd like to multiply by l to the 3 fourths. And I'd like to multiply by k to the 1 fourth. Get rid of all the fractions. I get 0 equals 1 dl dt k plus l times 3 dk dt. So what that gives me is if I already knew dl dt, dk dt is equal to dl dt times k divided by 3l. And so again, this is a situation where I have a relationship between L and K, and I know one of them's moving with respect to time. I want to see how the other is moving with respect to time. Thank you.